God is good. Everybody stand up. I was expecting about 300 today, so they started coming in and started going to slide in. But let them get on and sit down beside you. If they come and sit down beside you, that's the sign they feel comfortable with you. Amen? God is so good. Everybody, everybody enjoying the heat? What? <laughs> definitely got some heat. Y'all say this with me. First, welcome to the church. Everybody say welcome. Welcome. Look at somebody say welcome to you. God's got this. All right, here we go. Spiritual warfare is 10% Satan's tactics and 90% how we respond. Remember, with God, we are not hopeless, helpless, hopeless, but we are powerful. If I could read it, it would help. Remember, I'm still trying to figure all this out. I'm getting better. I haven't run over it, by the way. <laughs> It's really funny, I think I told y'all when they put them on and said, how are you seeing? I said, I'm seeing good. I turn around and knock the guy over right there in the doctor's office. Amen. God is good. God is fair. To some he gave brains, to the other he gave hair. I did that for Stephen. <laughs> All right, I'll say this to me. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one, except my worship. Oh, Lord, in God, give the Lord a hand clap. Yes. Here we go. Y'all ready to worship? Are you ready? Go ahead, boy. Him. I lift my offering to you. 
Let it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed. Although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply. Except my seed, O oh Lord. Give the Lord another hand clap. <laughs> Praise the Lord, saints. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Does anybody have an outspoken request? Anyone else? Uplifted hands, special needs, lost loved ones. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity we have today to gather in your house and to lift up your name, Father. As the breeze goes up, Father, we ask your spirit to come down and touch each and every life this day, this hour, Father. You see the needs that we stand in need of, supply according to your reasons of glory, Lord. That testimony would be given, Father, and we'll thank you for everything that's said. Now be with us today, prepare our hearts to receive the message, and anoint the pastor to deliver, Father. We'll thank you. And give praise, honor to your name. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Church say. Amen. 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 Everybody stand back up. God is so good to us. Amen. He's better to us than we are to him. Amen. 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 I see praise in the
covers our soul. Everybody got your communion? If you don't have your communion, then make sure you raise your hand and somebody will get it to you. Today's going to be kind of a different kind of service because <coughs> I actually had thought that the Lord was showing me to preach on the invasion of the ants and talk about uh, how to fight off an invasion of the ants. And I've been working on it all week. <coughs> And just a couple of days ago, you know, you know, with Sierra, we thought we didn't walk through with Sierra with her heart. She finally got back home a couple of days ago. They're going to do another heart ablation uh, in a week or two. So between her heart and there's been some other folks that have been in the hospital, it's, it's, uh, some that are part of this family, some that are not part of this family, but they've had some rough goes up and there's been a lot going on. And, and so uh, I've noticed an increase of stress. And anybody in the heat itself does it. Anybody here <clears throat> have you noticed an increase of stress level? Okay, you're in the right place these <laughs> for, for today you're in the right place. And I think it's so cool. We get into communion, but before I do, this was sent to me <clears throat> out of clear blue, so to speak, or out of cyberspace. This was sent to me as we were starting service today. Just as I got up here it went ding ding as I got up here, and here it is. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Psalm 55, 22. And that's not awesome. Glory. So I said, Lord, you're right with what you got me doing today. Going to stress versus the ants. We're still talking about the ants, but right now, we're going we're gonna to talk about stress. Uh, but get your Bible out, if you like to follow along. You mean? Communion. That's what we're doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> a lot of time That's what I mean by what first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Eddie. Thank you so much. I didn't mean to sound smart, did I? Well, I did, but I didn't mean to sound that bad. I didn't think it that bad. That's what I said. You ever, you ever said something after you said it, you thought it was going to be funny, and after you said it, you said, man, sound more smart than it did. So that sounds smart than it did. Smart than Yeah. All right. Grandma always said I was a smart one, too. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, my mom said I was so smart, she called me son all the time. Ready? <laughs> First Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I received the Lord that which all sons delivered unto you, that the night of the Lord Jesus, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, my blood. This do you as often you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. That word of unworthily does not mean that. that that unworthy does not mean there's sin in your life. It means that you have a bad attitude. Okay, there's a difference. There's a difference because we all have to have God help us in our life because we have sins of omission, sins of commission, different sins when we know we're doing it. Sometimes we don't know we're doing it. There's not a perfect one in here but Jesus. Amen. So we just but well, we know there's a perfect sacrifice. That's what we're looking to. But if you got it, if you it's time for people that thought you were better than somebody else. And thought they had it going on over somebody else. That's the one to say, you better not be drinking it that way. Okay? okay? Shall be given to the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so that eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many a week and sickly and among you and many sleep. For we will judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Let's pray. And ask the Lord to show us and remove it and go to him and know that he's got this. <clears throat> Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well, God, and you are on the throne. That you have taken everything, Lord, everything that we've gone through. And, Lord, you can make it into something good. Even though no matter how bad it is, it can wind up later on being something that was for our benefit. 
ask you right now, Lord, to touch us, Lord. If there's any, any attitudes or actions within us, God, that you do not approve of us, show us and help us put it under blood. We thank you for what you do for us. We thank you for what you, what you went through for us. I ask you right now, Lord, none of us are perfect, but we trust the perfect sacrifice. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Now, go ahead and get it. And just some of y'all have been a while since you used this, so we're going to have some more practice. Take the first, the clear one. Go ahead and pull it back and get to the, to the bread. Get to the bread. The Bible said on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, he blessed it, he said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Also, just bend over, bend down that foil, bend it down, if you hear it pop, then you can pull it up and it'll get to the juice. There's the juice. The Bible says also that he was betrayed and took the cup <coughs> and said, This cup represents my blood and the new, the new covenant for you. Drink it in remembrance of me. Go ahead and thank you, church. Thank you, church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what he's done. Go ahead and give him a hand clap. Give him a hand clap for praise. He's done that. Now, I've had people, especially maybe they're out watching this on Facebook, and they may not have, they won't take communion, but they I mean, the little side up here, they won't take communion, but they don't have any uh, uh, grape juice, and they may not have any bread. I'm here to tell you something, the juice and the bread itself is not a sacrament, it is an ordinance, there's a difference. A sacrament is something that has saving value and power, an ordinance is following the command of Jesus, looking to the cross. So if there's somebody out there and you don't have uh, a communion way of praying, and that don't don't feel bad, you just go grab you something. Just grab something. If you got to get a little cup of water and get a get, get an Oreo or what not Oreo, but a uh, cherry or something, whatever, you take it. Because remember, this does not have saving power. It's not a sacrament. It's an ordinance. An ordinance is being obedient to what God has said because Jesus Christ provided everything we needed in his sacrifice on the cross. So it's okay. But when we're in here, we're going to make sure we have everything. Now, now again, I asked y'all, uh, how many have been stressed a little bit more than usual? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you on me, I'm going to tell you about me. The other day, yesterday, I was in Linda. I, I, before I get through, I didn't tell you this. I love this. I thought about Eddie. Uh, <laughs> when Eddie was a little boy, his uncle gave him uh, a harmonica for his birthday. And so, he goes to his uncle and says, thanks, the harmonica that you gave me is the best birthday present ever. The uncle said, well, that's great. What songs can you play? Eddie said, oh, I don't play it. Mom gives me a dollar a day not to play it during the day, and Dad gives me five dollars a week not to play it at night. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's the hybrid book. All right. I like it. <laughs> All right. So, so yesterday. I remember Linda and I, we had I, I done some other things, and Linda and I were, uh, we were going to her mother's house trying to get stuff ready so we could get it, get it sold. I can't believe how much stuff still in the house. And we're just trying to get it sold, and, and then we had people come in and, and disrupt the flow, and it was really, really hot. And so Linda told me where you get some gas at the gas station, I was like, pump her gas for her, especially if she was tired. So I went with her, pulled up beside her. And I said, I'm going to give you some gas, and you can get you, I'll get you your gas. And so I pumped her gas. I went ahead and washed her windshield. I went and washed my windshield, found a bad spot, and found it clean. And I get through, and I put the windshield washer up. She was off the side of the head, all the way across, put more pumps, put it down, come back, took out my gas pump, loaded, up my, loaded me up, got in my 
got got an Earl. We call my car Earl. Her car Pearl. And so I got an Earl, and she was in front of the sex I said, "Let's go." And I was waiting for her to go in front of me, but instead she gets up, gets out. I said, "Why she get out?" It's because she walks around to the back of the car. I said, what is she doing? So I get out of the car and go with her. And when I got out of the car, look, I left the nozzle in her truck. So if she had pulled away, she would have pulled the gas nozzle. Everything. That would not have been a very, very good day. And she looked at me and I said, yes, yes. Every now and then it's stress to do stuff like that. So although you may not show, although you may not show the signs of losing the temper, or losing your cool, or being short with people, it's still going to weigh heavy on you and make you do some things that you wouldn't normally do. That's like leaving a gas nozzle in a vehicle and telling your wife to take off, okay? So, so again, it's been pretty stressful, you know, like with, uh, with Sierra. Sierra was in, in was cardiac intensive care in, in Greenville, and then, there was a time when she really got really, really bad off. They put a crash cart outside her door. And she saw that and got worse. And so DC said, you know, please move the crash cart. So they put a wheelchair there and put a defibrillator. And, and so that kind of stressed on the 20 year old and not being able to find the problem. And it was getting worse. Of course, now they got the right kind of medicines and she's doing good. She ain't had an attack in three days. She's going to do another heart. And the heart ablation, they couldn't fix it at the time, three hours in there. And so they get me to do it again in another couple of weeks. But that's stressful. And not to mention the other folks that are having problems and some people that have got sick and need CPR, all kinds of stuff. So, so um, um, this whole week, for a lot of people that I know, it's been very, very stressful. Another word we use for stress is to be wired up. You know, if somebody gets stressed, they get all wired up. So I, I'm just going to make a little, make a little funny for a minute, just a little funny, and then we're going to get into some serious stuff. Now, now this, remember, this was not what I was going to preach this week. I was going to preach on on an attack or an invasion, how to take care of an invasion, and I talked about the evil so so many times. But this is going to be a little bit different, and this is what the Lord showed me. I really believe that, that this is for today's service. But ten signs that you're wired. Number one. You answer the door before people knock. <laughs> Number nine, you get a speeding ticket while you fart. <laughs> How do you do it, Nick Offer? Number eight, you show another people's fingernails. Okay. Right. I don't you know people's fingernails. I don't know how tight my daddy was when we were younger. On Friday nights, he thinks you can take your fried chicken and we would lick other people's fingers. <laughs> he was tired. Number seven, if you walk 20 miles on the treadmill before you realize it's not plugged in. <laughs> Number six, you can channel surf faster without a remote. <laughs> Whoa. Number five, you can outlast the Energizer Bunny. Watch this, not going to that anyway. <laughs> Number four, you short out motion detectors. Number three, you have you, you have a cry over spilled milk. Number two, you help your dog chase its tail. <laughs> you are out. You are stressed out. You help your dog chase its tail. Number one, Charles Manson thinks you need to come back. <laughs> <laughs> you are stressed out. I know the younger people might not know Charles Manson, but we know Charles Manson. We know of him and how crazy, how crazy uh, he was. So now, one of my favorite scriptures, and just one of what we just had was one of my favorite ones too that just came into me before we started the service today. And it is they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40 and 31. I stand on that one so, so many times. I wrote it to myself. I believe it. I know that God's got this and I trust Him. So now, let's talk about the for a minute. Remember, I've told you, we've talked about this before, but this is going to be a little different. God uses many examples from nature to describe a nature of people. 
and not in the nature of people, but the nature of nations. Men, he uses the lion, the bear, the leopard. For Satan, he uses the serpent. Jesus, uh, the lamb shows his redemptive nature, and the lion shows his reigning nature. Then there's the eagle. The eagle, of course, represents Israel. None of them represent Israel, it represents the church. But not only does it represent the church collectively, it ought to collect, it ought to represent us individually. We all should be eagles. I was looking at the, uh, some top ten things that people like put as motivational speaker or motivational messages in the office, and it says, uh, "Yes, eagles can fly through the storm and said, but weasels <laughs> never get caught in an airline engine." <laughs> Okay. Yet they work in the office to understand that. <laughs> All right. Eagle pies. This is just a quickie here. We're going to get through this. I want to see this. The, general, the, the, the eagle is mentioned 32 times in Scripture, more than any other bird. Uh, he's called the king of birds, just as the lion is called the king of the jungle. Of anything made up of flesh and blood, Pound for pound, the eagle is the strongest thing on earth. Pound for pound. Because there's the rhinoceroses and there's the elephants and there's all that, but pound for pound, they're the strongest thing on earth. Just a few little facts. Look at that. Whew. That's awesome. An eagle. Always builds its nest in the heights of the mountain, upon a rock, or up in a tree, and the catfish form is up on the top of the tree. It will claim a rock, and he will never change rocks. <laughs> when he's dying, he looks toward his rock. Something else that's amazing about an eagle is they mate for life. The eagle parents himself do everything together. You're seeing that going on right here. You say, well, what, those two bald-headed, the male and female are both white-headed. Okay, they're both white-headed. All right. <clears throat> the cool thing that I really think about the eagle, of, I can tell when it's really a bad storm coming because you ride through the yeah, catfish farm. Uh, go by and there's bad weather out and you don't see any other birds flying. But you look up tall, way up in the air, and there's the eagle. You see, the eagle doesn't fear the storm. The eagle flourishes in the storm. Why? Two reasons. Number one is because the eagle has enough strength and enough power and it gets in the air currents and it flies above the storm. So it doesn't let the storm bother it. It sees the storm. The storm's going on. The storm can take it out of here, but it's above the storm. And number two is they have special shields in their eyes. Then when they're flying, it's a bad situation. The shields come down, and it's like wearing goggles. And so here's the eagle. The shields come down. It's like wearing goggles. It's flying through the storm, flies up above the storm. It's the only bird that does it. All the other birds actually will find a place to land and find a place to keep it safe. But the eagle, it soars. That eagle don't look so good, does it? Comes a time in an eagle's life when life gets to him. When life gets to him, the eagle starts to stress. Usually between 30 and 40 years old, the eagle can live, live to be 70. So sometimes between 30 and 40, the eagle starts to get stressed out. You can tell it because now it's suffering the loss. It doesn't have the abilities of its youth. How many know that one? Amen. Amen. The eagle begins a painful process of renewal. And after it begins this process of renewal, which is going to last about five months, five months, the eagle finds restoration. So let's talk about this a little bit. Look at it again. So, man, with wings and eagles, that's just so awesome. So, so awesome. All right. 
There's a serving power that they'll have. Those that lay on the Lord shall renew their strength. That word wait means it's not a cessation of activity. It's not mean you just stop and just sit there. It's not take God to do something. But it means you realign yourself to the activity. The activity's still going on. There's still problems going on. You still got a weird old friend. You still got problems in, in somebody else, in the children's marriage, or you got a child that's disrupting this school, or you got something going on. It doesn't mean those things stop. When you wait on the Lord, it just means that you back up and you realign yourself with what? Whatever's causing you stress. You realign yourself with whatever is trying to take you down. So again, you don't stop. You just look around and take it from another way. That word wait literally means to bind or twist. So also not as not a sensation of activity or realignment, but that word to bind twist means you combine your strength with an outside source. That outside source, part of it is us, each other, but another part of it is, is with God. So now, let's go a little further. Matthew 11, 28 and 30. I thought it was kind of wild too that I didn't always been preaching this today until yesterday, or the day before yesterday, but it started. And yesterday, I really worked on hard. I was in B5 Monday, and there were some guys stressing. And I went to Matthew 11, 28, and I started reading it, and I began to tell them what I'm getting ready to tell you, and I just thought it all just kind of all goes together, because these guys are locked up. They're stressing because of they can't get a hold of their family, or they're stressing because their family has needs that they can't meet, or they're stressing because they can't get out, or they're stressing because they don't know what their court date is going to hold, they're not sure what's going to happen, and so they've got the stresses. And, and I told him, I said, I know you might feel like these stresses, these stresses might be unique to you in here, but there's a lot of people out there that's with their family still can't do anything to help. There's a lot of people out there that still don't know how they're going to make it. There's a lot of people out there that's going to do the same thing. And I said, if you think about it, just a minute, I promise you there was times in your life before you got in here that you were going through the same thing. Matthew 11 addresses that. It says, come on, come to me, all you that labor, exhausted physically, and are heavy laden, exhausted mentally. Have you ever been exhausted physically? This heat will exhaust you physically. Yeah. Have you ever been exhausted mentally? Even the heat will exhaust you mentally, but when you're exhausted physically and the heat's getting you, it will exhaust you mentally, and you're going to have to hold on because what happens is people get stressed out. I, I know the people that normally would have patience in Job, they get stressed out, they don't have the patience to Job anymore. People used to look at you and smile, that's okay, and just smile. They're not looking at you and smiling. They're looking at you like they want to chew you up and spit you out. It's not because anything you've done is the stress within them. If you can get that in your mind, it's not you, it's the stress talking. You just take my yoke upon you and learn to be front of meek and lowly heart. You'll find rest into your souls. That yoga is a device used to combine strength. It's synergy. If you can get up under that yoke, the two wives can get up under the yoke and they pull it at the same time. The horses on the stagecoach, they have that yoke around them. That's so they can pull it at the same time. And just a little side note here, that synergy. How, how, one horse, how much weight, this is all averages, how much weight do you think a horse can pull? An average horse, an average horse. I'm talking about a Clydesdale. An average horse can pull. Anybody? Good. A average horse can pull 8,000 pounds. Wow. Four times. Right? Okay. Well, when you put two horses together, you would think that would be 16,000. Right? You put two horses together, and they can pull 24,000 pounds. Synergy. Because once you put synergy together, the drag's different, the amount, and, and, and uh, <laughs> Luke Holt said, it's not the weight that kills you, or not the stress that kills you, or the, or the thing that's got you down that kills you, it's how you carry the load that kills you. And so, again, so a horse can pull 8,000 pounds, two horses can pull 24,000 pounds. Wow, what a big difference. The same way, but we can yoke with God, that's what he says here, take my yoke upon you, learn of me, when you 
get up under his yoke and learn this way he does things, then you're going to walk in sync. And when you walk in in sync, there's things around you that can be adulterated and shatter you, but because you're yoked with him, it no longer does that. Okay? So now, there comes a time in the eagle's life being 30 or 40 years old that the eagle realizes, hey, I ain't got it anymore. Maybe he would say, I can't take it anymore. Maybe he would say, I'm not fit for this anymore. Don't even raise your hands. But lately, just lately, without raising your hands, have you said, I can't take it anymore? Have you said, I'm not fit for this anymore? Have you said, I don't know how in the world we can do this? Anyway, anybody, don't raise your hands, but anybody thought that. You see, the eagle realizes this. And if the eagle doesn't do anything, the eagle will die. Lord, off dead. The eagle will die. And so the eagle realizes this. God puts something in it. And so it does something that brings renewal. It, uh, and that word renewal means to pierce or to change, abolish, alter, change, cut off, go on the floor, grow up, uh, be over, pass away through, renew, sprout, strike through. So watch. Here it goes. Already we're getting ready to talk about some good stuff here. Well, I think we are. Praise God. So now, here's the eagle. Bless the eagle's heart. See how pitiful he looks? You know what he's doing? He's getting ready to go through that painful process. Mm-hmm. He realizes there's a difficulty in his life. Number one, he no longer soars. <laughs> Every bird known to man takes off by flapping his wings. But the the eagle leaps into the wind and soars. It doesn't have to flap its wings. It just soars. And it can go so far because it doesn't give out. It doesn't get weary. But it comes a time when the feathers, at between 30 and 40 years old, the feathers start overgrowing. And as the feathers start overgrowing, his ability to soar and to fly and to do the things he normally would do is going away. Did you know, I'm just give you a little bit of some more of those little fun facts. Did you know that an eagle has 20, 20 uh, slash 4 vision? An eagle can spot another eagle 50 miles away. Wow. And the eagle. They're flying over 150, 100, over 100 miles an hour, and a 150 mile an hour dive can spot a rabbit three miles away. And at 150 mile an hour dive, take out that rabbit. Or in a fish pond, take him a fish to fly away. But between 30 and 40, you can't do that anymore. You can't see good. You don't feel good. You can't maneuver like you once did. Things are really, really, really starting to get kind of rough in the old bird's life. Not only can you not soar, you can't see. His beak and his talons get overgrown. His ability to hunt, <clears throat> his ability to defend himself starts fading away. There's no way they can be satisfied now. Never satisfied. His ability uh, is failing to do what these other eagles need to do. So God puts it in him. He's put it in you too. But so many times, while I'm getting ready to tell you that the eagle does, if the eagle resists doing this, the eagle dies. And in the human way, if we resist doing this, we die. Maybe not physically, but spiritually. 
and men on things. And on most things. So here's what goes on. He gets on his rock. When he gets on his rock, here's, here's what he does now. And that's just part of a that's just part of what's going on there, part of what's happening to him. But he has a time of seclusion. He pulls himself away. That was from the BBC, matter of fact. And I, was, I didn't want to show the whole thing. <clears throat> he has some productive pain. Remember, he's been in pain all this time, but now he's got productive pain. He pulls all of his feathers out. Wow. After he pulls his feathers out, he beats his beak against the rock until the beak breaks away. And before he pulls out his beak, he pulls out his talons. He's got no talons. He's got no feathers. And he's got no beak. He sits there, and all he can do is cry and wait. This is a five-month process to get all the feathers out, to get the talons out, to get the beak broke off, and wait for it to grow back. So all he can do is sit on his rock and cry. Wow. He said, why in the world would he do that? Because if he doesn't, he's going to die. For protection, the other eagles fly above him constantly. The mortal predators. Not only do they keep flying around the mortal predators, they know what he can eat. And so they fly above and they deliver whatever kind of food this eagle can eat. So there he is, four or five months, waiting for his beak, for his talons, for his hair to come back, looking up on his cry and depend on the protection from above. And if he gets anything, it comes from above. Now, some powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. What happens is the body becomes dependent. The eagle waits for wings to grow back. In the middle of all this, it loses all of its self-dependence. Wow. It's learning to lean on God as its source. It's learning to lean on the other birds dropping food. And it learns the true meaning and example of a sacrifice of praise. They see the other day. When they had the crash car. Now, he said, Dick, I've done this so many times as a paramedic. I've seen that with Grandma. I've seen that when I said, My daughter, 20 years old. And I looked at him and I said, I have no idea how you're feeling right now, son, but I can see you how I feel. And they put the crash cart outside Bethany Perkins. And then eventually, they didn't put it out there anymore. Because she said, unless I can come back and have a fruitful life, don't even try. I said, but the first thing I did during that cancer center is I walked up and down the halls and I praised God and I thanked Him for being our Creator and the Master and have the power of all situations. That says at that moment, 
when you do that, there's a true sacrifice of praise because now you're doing something you don't feel like doing. You're doing something you don't want to do. Those eagles laying there, no end of the fingers, no talons, no feet, no feathers. They're all just starting to come back, being fed from above. And as they cry for us, that would be our sacrifice of praise. Wow, that's so powerful. Wow. There's a productive pain, there's protection, there's provision, but then there's progress. Because eventually, in this four or five month process, the feathers and the beak grow back. And when they grow back, there's an oil sack on the chest. And the eagle, with his new beak, this was not crested over, this is not beat up, this is not chipped, this doesn't have calcium deposits on it. He goes down and he punctures the oil sack. When he punctures the oil side, he spreads the, spreads the oil all over his feathers. His sight comes back, and his agility returns. And he looks like he did years before. Wow. Our time of resolve. When we're going through stress, we're being beat up, slammed. I can't tell you how many times this week, when I was in the cardiac ICU with Sierra or somebody else in an ICU somewhere else or somebody in a nursing home or just somebody going through something, and if I could hear it, I heard why, why, why so many times and no answers. There's times in our own life when we're going through this when we have to find some productive pain. There comes a time when God allows this, you get a time of seclusion. Elijah. Elijah was on the juniper tree. It's seclusion. He tells us, God, I'm the only one serving you. That was not true. But his stress was telling him a lie. Your stress will lie to you. He says, I'm going to die. Again, his stress was lying to him. And so God addressed it. We may talk about that later. I won't get into it now. What you do is, when you get a seclusion, and you spiritually just start plucking out the feathers, getting rid of the old thoughts and the attitudes that got you nowhere. I don't know about you, but this thing here has got me in more trouble over the years. In your seclusion, you learn to say things differently. In your seclusion, your old thoughts and attitudes are gone. When you get seclusion, the talents, the way you do things is pulled back, and the way you defend yourself is different. What happens is you lose your self dependence. And you begin to wait on God. And this protection, you learn to lean on God as your strength. If God doesn't protect me, it ain't going to get, ain't going to happen. And God is our provision. Learn to lean on God as our source. If God doesn't provide, it's not going to happen. So, in our time of resolve, man, that's a pretty end. Man, that is so pretty. The progress. Our life starts getting back in order. The Holy Ghost brings a fresh anointing. Our discernment is restored. And our agility returns. You see, just like the eagle, like us. 
Some never make it. There's people that used to come to this church and come to other churches and in your family you lean to for your spiritual knowledge and for some spiritual yoking, spiritual strength. And they got in this position and they didn't get in seclusion and let God work on them. And now they no longer serve God. Or they serve God from a distance. Because they didn't get the best of them. The evil. If it doesn't do this, it'll be destroyed before trying. And those who make it, though, they discover a new freshness, a new strength, a new boldness, a new freedom, and they begin to soar. And get ready to close. Brandon, get ready to come place in the kitchen. The choice is yours. Understand, there's some things I'm, I'm never going to play. I'm never going to be able to play baseball with 20 year olds and hold my own like I used to could. I know that. I used to not go basketball. I have a hard time even touching the net now. That may never change. But the inside, the Bible says, all the outward man perisheth, the inward man can be renewed day by day by day by day. We've got to want it. And we've got to be willing. I want to be like that eagle right there, stand full of that fish. I remember going by that catfish pond one day and I saw the eagle come out of the tree and went down the catfish pond and pulled out a catfish and went right on up and just kept on flying every way. And I saw the fish, it was a big one. It was just a wiggling, but it was over with. He got that fish. And then one day, Lynn and I were after service on Monday, Sunday morning. She stopped right in the middle of the highway because two eagles were fighting over a fish. And they were in the middle of the air, twisting around. Like you saw over there, twisting around. And I heard them screaming. And before I could get my camera ready, what happened was they pulled apart them. And the fish was cut in half. One flew off with the other one fish, part of the fish, and the other one dropped. And I got in the road, and there was a fish, half of the fish was that long. It was such a powerful, powerful thing I saw. Here's this week's assignment. But you listen carefully. Now, how many like to wait? I get out waiting, waiting for the waiting for the minute box in the microwave. I'm ready to push the button before it gets to the end. I remember I'm cooking rice and took 25, 30 minutes. And here I know minute rice. And in that 59, 55 seconds, I'm ready to pull it out. If sometime this week you experience an unexpected downtime, if you're right on Dow 33, I can promise you from here to Chocolate Land, you're going to find downtime at least five times in the way for the last couple of months because we're doing the line work. And you can stop in your way and you finally get through. And after you finally get through, you know, uh, and by the time you get your speed up, you got to stop again and wait for another. I checked the other day and it took me 20 minutes to get down Highway 33. Extra. 23 minutes extra. When I put in Garvin, uh, coming to the church itself, it's going to be here at 12, 12 left 12, and I got here at 12.30, and that's because of those delays. And I began to think of it like this. I had plans. Well, plans got interrupted this week because I spent a lot of time in the cardiac intensive care unit. I had other plans. They got disrupted, got stopped, but we're here Tuesday night because of all this that's going on. If 
And sometimes it's weak. You experience an unexpected downtime. Here's my challenge. Learn to say this. Thank you, God, for this season of renewal. A season can be five minutes. A season can be five minutes. Five years. I like to say season instead of time. Because time, no, 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 you never know when it's going to start and when it's going to stop. But a season has a starting and a season has a stopping. This week, as hard as it may be, if you, I'm saying one more time, you experience unexpected downtime. Don't you know that God does that already? He doesn't look down at you and go, Now, Dan, it's not what I had planned today. I thought I want you to be here at 12 o'clock, not 12 30. Now, what are you doing about it? No, God already knew. And when I got on that road, it was going to be, instead of a little out of pedestal, be close to 12 30. He already knew that. So, if you can find a way, say thank you, God, for this season of renewal, because there's a reason why you got me waiting. That's so hard, especially if I got ADHD, that is so, so hard. My wife says I got ADD, D, 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 Are you stressed? You need some rest. Wow. That's a whole lot of questions. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. From me, lowly in heart. And you shall find rest to your souls. That didn't mean that you find rest physically. Unto your souls is your psyche, your thinking ability, your ability to talk with everybody and talk with God. You get so stressed out to even verbally get the words out. He says, if you take my yoke and learn to me how I do it and walk beside me, yoke up, you're going to find that rest in your mind. reasoning because I can't figure out why a 20 year old needs to be in a cardiac intensive care unit I couldn't figure out why a 27 year old would die of cancer Not, I mean major 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 stuff there's a whole lot of stuff I can't reason but if you don't come to Christ you can heal that mind Heal that heart. Heal those nerves. And yes, I hate. I hate when I see the fire. I see him sitting there going slow, slow, slow. And I said, "Please don't turn that thing." And sometimes when I was talking, I thought he was going, "Well, there's David. Let's see if we can make you mad and let him stop." That's not what he was doing. He got a radio. They tell him when to stop. They tell him when to go. God's got you. Everybody that's standing. Everybody stand. Bow your head. Close your eyes. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, 7 8 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out his roots by the stream. And does not fear when he comes. For the leaves, for his leaves remain green, and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. That's us. Every 
forget about it, back close, so I look around. We got a lot of things going on. I told you this is a season of sickness. I, I, I've seen a bunch of people sick that I normally, they're not sick. There's a lot of things going on. But it's a season. And usually when there's a sickness, you have to wait. But instead of getting annoyed or letting it wear you down or pick away as your soul, learn just to stop and say thank you, God, for this season of renewal because I know something good is going to come out of this. I hate what's going on. I hate it. But thank you for the season of renewal because I know something good somewhere, somehow is going to come out of this.
Father God, we thank you for the chance and the privilege to be able to come to thy house and to some pray. You know, we're supposed to be our heart, Father. Only thank you for the time that gives us time out, Father. Let it come to the goodness of you, Father, and renew it of our public soul. Spirit, Father, we thank you for just being there for us, for the patience, for the vision of how we need to learn, Father. Thank you for that. The other sound of your part is over, Lord, and bring back the next point of time. This and all things, all of always ask that you're holy to the sons of the name. And to this I do say, amen. Amen.